In this video, I'm going to show you the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. So the next action I want to show you is a custom trim to start and end. I have a project in front of me here, but I want to trim the left side and the right side to get rid of any noise. Now we could do this with razor editing, create a razor edit over here for our drums, delete it, do the same for the bass and guitars, and do the same at the end for the drums and the bass and guitars. And that's pretty quick, but we could do it even quicker using some custom actions for custom trim, start, and end. So let's go to the actions menu, show action list, and type into the filter, move edit cursor to mouse cursor. And this is the action we want to use. Create new action, new custom action, and we'll add to it, trim left edge of item on the mouse to edit cursor, move this over here, and we'll give it a name, and save it. And it shows up right here. Let's duplicate it for the right side, edit this one, rename it, get rid of this one, trim right edge of item on the mouse to edit cursor, and now we have those two custom actions, trim left and trim right. And we had a keyboard shortcut to each. I'm gonna use A for the left side, and F for the right side. So now, we just put our mouse where we want to trim the left side, type the keyboard shortcut, and it trims that much. Do the same with our snare, the overheads, go to our bass and our guitars, and it trims them perfectly based on where we place the mouse. And for the other side, the right side, just use the other key over here, here, and here, and for the bass and guitars. Just like that, we trimmed our project. And we could also add split within it. We could split right here, type in the S key to split it, and the other key to trim the left side to clean it up even more. I just think this is a bit quicker to clean up our audio like this, using those two custom actions for the left side and the right side just like this. The next action I want to show you is called Solo in Front. I have a project in front of me here with a guitar loop, kick, and drum loop. Let's hear it. And to hear each track separately, we could use the solo button right here. Just the guitar loop, just the kick, or just the drum loop. But if you notice, we're just hearing those tracks. We're not hearing any of the other tracks, which is how solo works. But we could also just hear a bit of those other tracks. And that's called solo in front, where the track we solo is in front, but we're still hearing the other tracks, just lower. And we can turn that on if we go to the options menu and choose this option, solo in front. And now if we solo our tracks, we're still gonna hear the other tracks just a bit lower. So the kick, notice this D button shows up, letting us know we're dimming this track, not turning it off. Notice how we hear the guitar loop and the drum loop, just a lot lower. If we solo the drum loop, we still hear the guitar loop and the kick, but again, much lower. And how much lower is set in the preferences. Control P on the PC, Command Comma on the Mac. If we choose Mute Solo, right over here is the setting for solo in front dimming. It defaults to minus 18, but we could change it to any setting we want. Let's change it to minus eight to make it more obvious. So now, if we solo the kick, these other tracks are gonna be minus eight lower.
but we still hear them. So this. So we can still hear our tracks in context with the other tracks much lower. But the best part of this feature is we can adjust the dim level on the fly. If we go to our actions, show action this, and type in solo in front, there's an action right here to adjust the solo in front dim. And we can do it with the mouse wheel or any fader or knob on a MIDI controller. I'm going to use the mouse wheel and set it with a whole bunch of modifiers. So now we can use that keyboard shortcut to adjust the dimming level. Let's solo the kick and lower it completely. And we just hear the kick. And then we can bring it up slowly to taste. Try the same thing with the drum loop and adjust it on the fly. Or the guitar loop. So we adjust it completely on the fly based on the soloing we're doing. So we can hear the track in context with all the other tracks just dimmed, not completely muted. And when you want the old way, just turn it off right here. We're back to soloing normal. The next action I want to show you is how to hide tracks. So I have a project right here with some drums, a couple of bass tracks, and some guitars. And I've already decided I like the second bass track better, so I don't need the first one. But I don't want to delete it from the project, I just want to hide it and mute it. So what we could do is just select it, go to the view menu, and open up the track manager, and choose that track over here, hide it from the track control panel, the mixer, and mute it. Because obviously, if I'm not using the track, I want it muted, so it takes up no CPU processing. So I'll hide it again from here. But there's a better way to do this, and it's also a bit quicker, using the right-click menu. So I'm going to create a custom action. Go to the Actions menu, Show Action List, and type into the filter Hide Track. There's an action right here to hide tracks in the Track Control Panel and the Mixer. Let's create a custom action from this. Go to New Action, New Custom Action. Then we're going to mute the track as well. This way it mutes automatically. Again, as we don't want it to play and use up any CPU processing. Search Mute Track, and this action shows up. Drag it over here. We'll give it a name and save it. And it shows up right here. But we're not going to give it a keyboard shortcut. We're going to add it to the right click menu. So we're going to search Customize. Open up Menu Customize and go to the Track Control Panel Context. And scroll down under Remove Tracks, and we're going to add that custom action right over here. Double click it, right click to rename it, hit OK. And now, when we have a track or tracks we want to hide and mute, just select them and right click and go right here and hide and mute tracks. Track is hidden. And we could also see it's muted. It's hidden from the track control panel, mixer, and also muted. So it's not going to play and it won't take up any CPU processing. If we want to see it again, just unmute it and show it again. If we want to hide it again, just right click it, hide and mute tracks, and it's gone again. Now, because of the length of this video, I've divided it into multiple parts. Check out part six next. 
So those are the best actions that you probably didn't know about in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.